uh, this is the 96 boards uh, here at Linara Connect. And so what are you going to do with the 96 boards? And who are you? Uh, so my name is Amit Pucheria. I am tech lead for 96 boards. Uh, I'm Ricardo Salvetti, I'm the platform engineer manager for 96 boards. So, and we're just officially starting the 96 boards team, so it's kind of our first week as a, as a team here. And uh, so you have a whole bunch of things to do around the 96 boards. What what kind of uh, things will you have to will you do about this? So I think one of the first priorities uh, we need to go talk talk to a lot of the Linaro engineers and figure out what they need from 96 boards. Some of the things I've heard this week are uh, we need upstream working mainline kernels, mainline U boot, mainline bootloaders in general working uh, on 96 boards. So I think that might be end up being one of our first uh, tasks first to tackle. Steps, yeah. It's especially because we're talking, talking about the hardware and uh, we have the specification for the hardware for multiple boards, but people are also expecting to, to be like somehow like upstream friendly and, uh, and you know like a similar kernel or similar build to work across the boards as well. So we don't want like to have like a different experience per board we want to actually you know, like help a little bit to bring some sanity in that sense and uh, also work with the engineers, the Lenara engineers, to see what, I, what is missing from the software side, make sure that everything is going well from the bootloader perspective, kernel perspective, the, the Android builds and the, any other builds that we do. So, so you've been in Lenara since the beginning, right? You got the prize yesterday. That's true. So Five years. Five years, yeah. Was it, did it have a different name in the beginning? It was... It didn't have a name, so the name used was NUCO. NUCO. It stands for New Company. Apparently, I'm told that uh, all legal documents, when you don't have a name, you just put the name NUCO in there. And then when you find a name, you just do a search and replace. And how long have you been in Nerf? Yeah, it's kind of a funny story because I was all part of the whole, like, the beginning, the NUCO, when they were building the company. And uh, was all, But I was, of course, like a canonical at that time, on Ubuntu on ARM. We were flying around. The, the first like connects were all together with uh, with UDS, and uh, then I'm, I joined Lenaro for like a year and a half, almost two years, uh, working on the developer platform team. So doing the builds like the the Ubuntu builds for the Snowball, for a few other boards that we had at that time. Working with the landing teams to make sure that they were upstreaming and focusing on the right things in there. And uh, and it's funny because then now I'm officially coming back from Lenaro as a, as an employee. And we have like a lot of similar challenges, like the, a lot of new exciting stuff to do and spe specifically because we have like now a specification for boards and have people producing boards and excited about it, but we still have the upstreaming kind of problem, right? How to do it right, how to, you know, like make sure that everything is compatible, that they don't die simply, you know, like be talking with the developers, make sure that everything is going upstream and everything is working well, so. I mean, there's, there's things around QA and... Uh validation that we need to definitely yes. uh, work on, basically work with some of our uh, builds and baseline and QA team and make sure that these boards are stable when they go right. out. The software is extremely stable and people can use the boards uh, for any applications they might have without it rebooting or overheating. So we've heard there are some such problems which yes. I think we should fix very quickly. And also, we also want to improve that on the documentation side of things. Uh, make sure that people can build their own software, how to build it, uh, how, you know, like the whole process of flashing, booting, and so on, where, where to find the patches if there's still additional patches that they might be looking for that are still not upstream. So we want to make sure that we improve the, the, the experience around uh, all the boards that we have uh, in N6 boards. So there's going to be a lot of, if it's not so easy to do documentation. It's going to be lots of stuff happening with that. Yeah, I think we, we, we'll have like someone dedicated to work on, uh, on the documentation side of things. And we are also looking for um, to hire someone to help on the, on the community side of things with technical support and so on and so forth. So if you're excited about 96 boards, you're excited about helping community with, you know, like on the technical side of things, take a look at the, the Lenaro website. There's a position in there that we're looking for. It's, it's really cool with the affordable 64-bit development board. It could be huge. It can be. I mean, once, be, yeah. once we have a great software story, I think uh, there's a lot of potential. And uh, yesterday, the, the, in the beginning of Linaro, there was a, a CEO before George Gray, and he said Canonical was very important in the beginning of Linaro. What, what, what happened in the beginning? 
Canonical was helping. Well, when they were, it, it was bootstrapping the yeah, engineering, the engineering resources because and, Canonical and, had a lot of experience open source before, and um, and they didn't want to set up the whole infrastructure and so on and so forth. And so we had like Launchpad in the beginning. We had like how to host like the kernels because we had the kernel team in Canonical as well. That's where Amit was working before, and uh, so. We basically were helping them to bootstrap on the open source side of things, how to do the things in the right way and, and so on. So. And so this is five year anniversary. What have you been doing mostly in those five years? So I have been tech lead for the power management working group uh, in the last five years. Uh, I figured it was time for a change uh, for me as well as for my team. They probably get tired of me by now. Um, I think 96 boards is an exciting challenge because there's, there's some interesting uh, things we can do with 96 boards. But as I, as I uh, said earlier, we first need a very, very crisp software story around this. I mean, the software just has to work. It has to be upstream. It has to uh, uh, satisfy two of our constituencies, uh, which is kernel and bootloader developers. So it's, it's that those are the low-level uh, engineers. And then there's the other engineering, the maker, uh, who basically just want to take the board and and do things with it, Con uh, connect uh, connect sensors, use it in robotics, use it in um, UAVs. I mean, we want to enable both sorts, both sides of communities. It's and quite the, it's quite a different uh, job, no? It is, it is. The power management has been a, a big deal for the ARM world. So. So one of the things for me uh, personally, even when I was in the power management team, was to get one of these uh, small low-cost boards out to every engineer in my team where we could actually measure stuff and benchmark stuff as we develop. <coughs> one of the things that's been missing in the kernel community so far is what is the impact of this patch on, on the power and performance side of things. We don't do enough of that. So. This platform could enable that if we have the right set of, uh, right set of boards and good software to go with so, it. So if you didn't have the board, you were just guessing? It wasn't guessing, but we, we had to... Uh, there's, I mean, power is a very sensitive topic around the ARM membership because that's one of the key differentiators. And so you had access to some platforms, but you couldn't actually talk about a lot of that in detail. Um, and. In some cases, it was you had to, you had to come up with tools which yes allowed you to make better guesstimates. I won't call it just blind guessing, but better guesstimates. So we have things like IdleStat, which allow you to track what C states and P states the processor is going into, and then extrapolate what the savings might have been. And it's also great with the 96 boards because it's cheap, right? So it's a 64 platform, and this is the high key. Yeah, I mean other 64-bit platforms are thousands of dollars exactly. currently. And people so. can experiment and especially with the high key you can like flash like you play with the build loader, it's open source. Um, we can play like on the kernel side of things as well. You we can do like a whole bunch of cool stuff around it. So. I mean if you think about this this is what is going into a Chromebook. Exactly. This is essentially what's going into a Chromebook. And for that, seventy dollars, seventy to hundred dollars, I think that's a great price point. And uh, there's also going to be like an interesting challenge with the uh, Enterprise Edition, which we do have a paper around. What's the challenge with that? It's because it's the first board that has, you know, like the SATA and so on. It's going to be like super fast, PCI, and uh, it's going to be enabling a whole different, you know, like a complete different range of applications and users and so on. So. I don't know about you, but I've been waiting for these exactly. sorts of boards for a very long time. Having fast I/O, exactly. Uh, the I/O is the usually yeah. and lots of memory because I could, I want to replace the servers and um, my media server at home or something with, with one, one, of, one of these low cost and low power boards. I can leave it on all the time. I don't have to worry too much instead of consuming hundreds of watts on an Intel platform, for example. You could maybe example. even connect a GPU on the PCI or something? Yes. And it's a full desktop? Yes. It can become a full desktop. We, we're told that that's possible and it's working in the labs in, in AMD for in this case. Exactly. So there's going to be a bunch of stuff <coughs> happening around this too? Right. Yeah. yeah. And we want to, we want to make sure that the, the the software experience for it is also great, right? We don't want people to be excited about it and buy it and so on, and then suddenly they're going to have like a lot of problems, you know, like because things are not upstream necessarily, they don't have sources, right, the right documentation. So we need to make sure that everything is 
for all the boards that we produce, uh, that everything is somehow like the experience is somehow similar for them, and it's a great experience. Is it easy to to measure the power used by these boards? To uh, connect something. Currently, you can measure at the board level. Uh, we are hoping to talk to uh, partners and get some more fine-grained uh, power instrumentation in there in future boards. So measuring the power, measuring performance, measuring everything. Yes. Benchmarking and. It's really awesome. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be it's huge. Great. Yeah, right. that's what we hope for. Yeah, excited.